We're going to have a look at Pictures to Exe. When we open up the program for the first time, you'll see a blank project window. At other times it will open with your most recent project already in the windows. We're going to create a new show and the first thing that I want to do is find the pictures that I'm going to use for the show. And on the left hand pane here you can see our Windows folder structure. Under the folder P2E I've got another folder called Paris so I'm going to click on that and you'll see that there are a lot of pictures there of Paris. You can change the size of that window just by dragging. If I click on a picture it will show that in the project viewer on the right hand side and once we start making our show there will be some controls here which are greyed out at the moment where we can play and stop the show and see how it's progressing. We can change the size of the images in this window by using the slider. In order to put the pictures into the show we can drag and drop just by using the holding the left mouse button down, drop each one into the project, double click, hold a group down together, selecting them by using the shift key and the left mouse button, and dropping them in. We can delete them. Again, I'm just going to select them all and hit the delete key. That just deletes them from the show. It doesn't delete them from your hard drive. If we want to just put all of the pictures in the show exactly as they appear in the window above, then just do a control D and that drops all the pictures into the show all at once in the order of the file numbers. We've got a light box. The icon is down in the bottom right hand corner and if we click on that it opens up the light box view and as you might expect in this view you can arrange, move around the pictures, just making them smaller with this slider. The first thing that I want to do is to take this dark slide, the black one, and put that at the beginning of my project because it's quite useful to be able to blend from a dark slide into the first one at the beginning and sometimes at the end of the project as well. I don't want all of these pictures in my project. Uh, I'm going to delete a few. Again I can just hit the delete key and delete the ones that I don't want. And I think that probably for this project I only want maybe about 60 pictures. So I'm going to select by holding the shift key and the left mouse button, select 61 to 125 and just delete them from the show. So I'm left with 60 pictures, that's quite enough to do this demonstration with. I can increase the size of the pictures and turn off the captions as they can sort of get in the way a little bit. One thing that it's useful to do at this stage is to decide how your fades are going to work one to the other and this red structure down here, some kind of modern sculpture, I think it's going to look good next to the big thumb. So if we just drag that over the thumb Again, just holding down the left mouse button to do this, it goes semi-transparent and you can view how it's going to look as it fades from one into the other and that produces quite a pleasant third image as it fades through. We can do that at larger size as well. Just hold it over to see how it's going to fade and this one with the head is going to fade quite nicely through into the, the gap in the uh, canopy there. And so I'm going to close that. One thing that you can immediately see is wrong is that slide 22 has a black stripe on the top and bottom of it. This is because all of the other slides have been already sized to 1400 by 1050 pixels. But number 22 is a different aspect ratio. It's 1400 wide but it's less than that high and so it doesn't quite fit the screen shape. We can correct that quite easily by going into Objects and Animations. And I can drag using these handles or I can 
ask it to cover the slide. You can see it's just jumped to fill the space. If we have a look at the work area at a smaller size, you can see what's happened. The slide sides have sort of hung off the screen space now. Um, we can actually reposition that if we want to and just move it right and left in the space and decide which part of the slide we actually want to show. And when we're happy with that, just click on close and that's corrected the problem with that slide. Now I'm going to have a look at the project options at this point and decide how long each slide is going to be on the um, in the show. At the moment the time interval for all of the slides is four seconds. Three seconds and 500 milliseconds and hit set for existing slides so that will set the time interval for all of the existing slides in the show. In the advanced tab I want to hide the mouse cursor during the show. I don't want that showing at all. I'm going to go to the effects tab and turn off all the fancy effects. By default they're all turned on and I wish that wasn't the case but if we hit this icon top right all of the fancy effects are turned off and we can just tick the fade in and out which is what I want for the majority of my pictures. And I've got a fade in time of 1500 milliseconds um, which is going to fade in each of the slides over that period and that's okay to start with. The other thing that I want to check at this point is that we've got the synchronize music and slides ticked because I'm going to add some music now. And there's a music tab here. I've put some uh, pieces of music into the same folder as the JPEG pictures and if I click add music we can see in the Paris folder there are three different pieces of music. I'm going to choose this one, the Shostakovich piece, and click open. And now that's in the project and it tells us here that we've got 3 minutes and 44 seconds of music. So I'm going to say OK to that. And now we'll have a look at the way that the music and the slides are going to work together and we do that in the timeline 